Okay, so everyone would agree that a good knife is an essential bit of kit and there's a lot of choice out there. If you're looking to get a bushcraft knife, there really isn't a simple answer as to what is the best knife. I think if anyone asks me what should I get, what bushcraft knife should I get, I'd say okay, right, first of all, what are you going to use it for? There's five things that I would consider when looking at a knife. Um, the first would be the steel, then the tang, then the grind, then the shape, and then lastly, which often gets forgotten, the sheath. So, okay, to start off with, the steel. Um, got carbon steel, stainless steel, and alloy steel. So, carbon steel is, in my opinion, the original and the best. Um, so, carbon steel, is classed in the numbers um by this one is the um this one is the condor blue river knife that's 1095 carbon steel so the 10 means carbon and then the 95 is how high the percentage is so the higher up the more carbon you get again i don't know the science but if you've got a 1095 knife then that's going to have a higher carbon content be better for using with a ferro rod for example um give you a longer lasting edge and have all the benefits of the carbon um then lower carbon ones like 1060 1050 again you've kind of got a good knife but you're kind of you're not going to get as good an edge as you would with the higher carbon content so when you're looking at knives the numbers that's what they mean um and then you've got stainless steel um so stainless steel which is quite nice and shiny this is with a chromium addition um which is what stops it rusting um so the chromium is what makes it stainless and also makes it good for use in signaling um if you're out tracking animals and you've got a knife to use there that go for carbon because any little sort of light reflection can scare little critters off quite easily um so then you've also got onto the alloy steel um which is a kind of a mixture of both worlds so you've got the um for example the 154 cm that stands for um that's 14 percent chromium so in stainless steel 11 percent is the minimum to make it stainless so 14 percent that's quite a good one and then a word that i'm going to not totally get right for pronouncing um four percent molybendium um which is another compound which stops it rusting and stops the um pitting corrosion that you'll find when you get stainless steel knives Stainless steel don't keep an edge as well as carbon steel. Um, carbon steel, you need a lot more maintenance on them. If you've got a carbon steel knife, you need to be oiling it, cleaning it before you're putting it away after every use. Stainless steel, I'd advise those ones for skinning, cooking, gutting fish, anything that's going to get dirty. Um, okay, so that's the steel. Um, for the tank, I have, I am not very technological, I'm proper old school, so uh, this is, this is from my notebook. These are different types of tank that you can get. So the top one is a skeletonized tank. That's quite similar to the full tank. The full tank is basically the total solid piece of metal. Um, so you can see on this you've got the metal the knife goes all the way along and it's held together in place by rivets there um the skeletonized tang you get a similar benefits you get the stability because again you've got the the tang that is going the entire width but it's a lot lighter because it's not got all of the metal in it so it's basically had it so it's like full tang but with a bit taken out so it's a bit of a lighter lighter weight um and then you've got the um narrowing tang which is in ones like this this is a knife my friends made me when i was in viking green at which years ago um so that goes off into a narrow point um and again that is a good tank um i prefer full tank because you can get a lot more stability on your knife you've got a lot more i prefer the balance of the full tank to be honest 
Um, and then you've got the stick tang and the partial tang. Um, again, it depends what you're using it for and what sort of knife it is, what sort of price point you've gone for. I'd always advise full tang, skeletonized tang, or if you're wanting something a bit more pretty and beautiful or something with a nice fancy handle, then a narrowing tang over a stick tang or a partial tang any day. Um, the next thing is grind. Um, I quite like a Scandi grind. Um, the grind on the knife is, I'm, I'll do a video at some point about sharpening for you guys, um, but the, the Scandi grind is one of the easiest ones to maintain. So this is the Condor Otzi. Um, you can't really see too well because my phone's a bit terrible, but the Scandi grind comes to a very, very nice point. Um, and it's very, very easy to sharpen. It's quite good to get on a wet stone, but if you've got any of the um, like little kind of sharpening devices, then it's absolutely fantastic for using with those. Um, but again, different grinds for different things. It depends what you want, um, what you're going to be using your knife for. But again, I personally find that like convex to Scandi grind, can't really go wrong with that but I do like something a bit hefty and multi-purpose if you're going for something like a skinning knife um then which is this you've kind of you know you're going to want a little bit of a light and narrower grind on it maybe just to get a little bit but I mean again scanty grind that's what I'd always go for um, okay, and then the shape of the knife. So that's another important thing. How are you going to be able to use it? How are you going to be able to hold it? How is it going to work for you? What are you going to use it for? So I really, really like this one. Again, it's kind of my favourite because it's got a nice pretty blue thing on it. But again, beautiful 1025 carbon steel. Absolutely perfect for my hand. Um, and then again, it's a really, really nice, good tip, good point. But then you've got different knives for different things. So again, like if I was skinning, then this is what I'd go for. Anything kind of like very narrow, delicate, this one's got an excellent point on it. Um, and then you've got other things like the, um, oh man, Joe Flowers, he designs a well sexy knife. The uh, Condor Otzi knife, I'll do a review for this at some point, this is so cool. But this is perfect for bow drilling. So literally, I mean, it depends what you want in your knife for. Again, a lot of people do use carbon knives. I have done it occasionally just to show off, you know, because why not? Um, with the ferro rod on the back, which is what it would be good to have a 90 degree, um, 90 degree angle. Um, so again, that kind of goes into the, the shape of it, what you're going to be using it for, how it's going to be used. Um, and then lastly, the sheath. Most life sheaths are leather, which is really, really good. Looking after your sheath is so important. Um, I've got a little bit of, this is, uh, this is sort of comfrey ointment, but it's basically oil, which is infused with comfrey, which is making it for magical knit bone properties um with some beeswax so basically any mix of like oil and beeswax i think is quite good oh, that's what i personally use it's coming up to spring so i'm gonna use this because the comfrey will give it a nice green luster and my nan used to say it was magical so why not put that on my knife handles um so to oil your knives um knife handles and your leather like a little bit of a dab of beeswax and wax um uh, beeswax and oil solution just goes nicely on the leather and you can also use it on the handle um i'll do a video at some point but again you can make this up really really easily and using a bit of unboiled linseed oil instead of olive oil or hemp oil or whatever you want to use um that can give different effects different lusters and linseed oil is always really really nice pure boiled linseed oil um is absolutely fantastic to use on its own but if you use cold pressed linseed oil and mix it with a base wax then that will give it a really really nice luster as well um plastic sheaths uh they are good to be honest a lot of people really dislike them there's a um i'll post a link to my mara companion knife lie pack in this because that's one thing about plastic sheaths they're not very comfortable to wear but for saying I mean this is my stainless steel knife this is what I use for cooking food preparation 
cutting cheese, anything that's kind of going to need to be just kind of cleaned and maintained. Again, stainless steel, that is the benefit of it. It doesn't need as much maintenance as carbon steel, but a plastic sheath is a lot easier to keep hygienic. So for anything that I was using for food prep, I would always go for a plastic sheath over a leather sheath any day. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. I hope that's been help helpful and yeah, peace and love. See you guys soon.